ओके सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टार्टेड डिस्कसिंग अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फिनोमिना दैट इज नोन एज पोलराइजेशन ऑफ लाइट वी वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट इज एन अनपोलराइज लाइट एंड वॉट इज अ पोलराइज लाइट आफ्टर दैट वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड टू हाउ टू पोलराइज लाइट बाई डिफरेंट मेथड्स we saw that if the light waves if the unpolarized light falls on a glass plate then the reflected light has is partially polarized and at a certain polarizing angle we can completely polarize it and that was given by the booster's law after that we saw that we can also polarize light by pile of glass plates and this time we can polarize the transmitted beam after that we studied that how the intensity of this transmitted beam it varies with the angle of our analyzer after seeing all this phenomena now we'll we are going to study another very important phenomena which will also be used again to polarize light let us see what is that this new phenomena it has remarkable applications what is that phenomena is known as double refraction now what is double refraction lot of the hint is given in the name double that when a beam of unpolarized light is incident on an n isotropic crystals this does not happen in all the crystals but we are taking n isotropic crystals like calcite or quartz then what do we observe we get two refracted rays instead of one so till now we have seen that whenever light is incident on a glass plate we get a reflected light and we get a refracted light but here what happens that instead of a single refracted beam we are observing two refracted beam instead of usual one this phenomena is known as double refraction or birefringence why are we calling birefringence because the two refracted rays which we are getting they will have different refractive index so we can see here that if i have a crystal let us take a calcite crystal then if i incident some unpolarized light on this which has both the polarization at some angle of incidence phi then instead of one we will observe two refracted beams and these two will form different angle of refraction this is my calcite crystal what are these two beams known as based on their properties or their experimental observations we have named these two rays the ray first is known as o ray or ordinary ray another one is known as e ray extraordinary ray so we observe two refracted rays known as ordinary ray o ray and extraordinary ray why are we giving these names because we observe that that the ordinary ray o ray follows snell's law because this is the usual whenever we uh, incident light on a glass plate the refracted ray it follows snell's law so this ray follows snell's law so we are calling it as ordinary ray so its refractive index n not will be phi not by phi sorry sin phi not by sin phi so it will follow the snell's law where n not is the refractive index of the ordinary ray whereas e ray we are calling it as extraordinary does not follow snell's law so n e is not equal to sin phi e by sin phi so these are the two important properties of these two rays another important 
thing to note down for these two rays are that o ray it travels with the same velocity in all in all the directions whereas so the wave front would look like this this is my o ray whereas the e ray it travels with different velocities in different directions this is my e ray we will talk about o ray and e ray in more detail little later before that now we would like to understand the polarization of this ordinary and extraordinary ray so in order to study in order to specify or in order to study the direction and vibrations of o ray and e ray we need few parameters of the crystal that how do we define the polarization of o ray and e ray with reference to what of o ray in order to specify this we define two important parameters of the crystal these are optic axis and principal plane so what is an optic axis optic axis is an axis of symmetry with respect to both crystal form and the arrangement of atoms it is not a line but a direction through and pa which passes through the blunt corners of the crystal now what are blunt corner of a crystal a blunt corner is one where three obtuse angle meet and in most of crystal there are only two opposite corners which are blunt so the optic axis would be the direction which is passing through that obtuse angles meet now if i want to draw for example in calcite crystal it would look like this so here in the crystal here the angle is 102 here again 102 and here again the other side the three faces meet with obtuse angle so the line passing through these two corners i call this as xx prime so my xx prime would be the optic axis for calcite crystal so this is my axis of symmetry it's of great importance and then we define a section or a plane known as principal plane which contains this optic axis and which is normal to the opposite faces of the crystal so for example if i have a crystal then which has six faces then we may have three principal planes which contains the optic axis and which is opposite to the which is normal perpendicular to the opposite faces of the crystal so what is the importance of this now a crystal for example a calcite crystal can be cut always parallel to the principal plane so my principal plane plane always cuts the surface of calcite crystal in a parallelogram with angles with with angles 71 degree and 109 degree so what i have drawn in the early picture which you have seen here this is the principal plane of the calcite crystal so this is 71 degree and this is 109 this is 71 degree and this is 109 degree so this so now with respect to this principal plane we can talk about the vibrations of en o ray the polarization of en o ray 
So now we can say that what was observed that when the ordinary light or unpolarized light enters the calcite crystal, it is broken into two. E ray and O ray. O ray vibrates perpendicular to the principal plane. Whereas E ray it vibrates parallel to the principal plane. Now we know about the polarization of O ray and E ray. So if the instant and another thing which I have told you about O ray is that it travels in O ray travels with same speed in all the directions. Whereas E ray does not. Now we would like to see that if our instant ray is being incident in the direction of optic axis. So now optic axis and principal plane is of great importance related to which we can talk about the polarization of O-ray and E-ray. So now if I say, so what do we observe that when the instant ray is, if the instant ray makes some angle with optic axis, then both we get both O-ray and E-ray and double refraction happens and both they travel with different velocities and they have different refractive index. If, but if the instant ray is perpendicular to the optic axis, then both O ray and E ray, they travel in the same direction because we know that whenever any ray which is being incident along the normal, it moves in the same direction. Similarly, the instant ray, if it is perpendicular to the optic axis, then both O ray and E ray, they move with in the same direction, in the same direction, but with different velocities. Because that is due to the anisotropy of the crystal. This is very important. Same direction, but with different velocities. So the wavefront looks like this. So this is my optic axis. Optic axis. This is my O-ray and this is my E-ray. Both are moving in the same direction but they are moving with different velocities. Due to this, many nice phenomena can be studied. We will talk them slowly. Then another important case is when the instant ray is parallel to the optic axis or when it is incident in the direction of optic axis, then what happens? Now we have already we have studied that optic axis is the axis of symmetry uh, with the arrangement of atoms and with the crystal. So all the properties that remain the same if along the optic axis. So if the instant right, you all can guess that what will happen if the instant ray is incident along the optic axis. And it's very obvious that both O ray and E ray will travel with the same velocity and in the same direction and there is no double refraction. If the instant ray is parallel to optic axis, then O ray and E ray will travel with same velocity and they both have same refractive index with same velocity and 
in the same direction due to the symmetry of the crystal. The wave front would look like this. So this is my optic axis now and my instant ray is also in the same direction. So the O ray will be like this and the E ray will also be like this. So this is my O ray and this is my E ray. Now based on the refractive index of the crystals, we can define, we can characterize our crystals into two types, negative and positive. If it can happen that the refractive index of, in some crystals, refractive index of E ray is more, refractive index of E ray, E ray is more Then O ray, if refractive index of E ray is more, its velocity will be less because they are inversely proportional to each other. Such kind of crystals are known as positive crystals. And the example of such kind of crystals is quartz. Another category is when the refractive index of E ray is less than O ray. When such case happens, the velocity of the E ray will be more than O ray. Such kind of crystals are termed as negative crystals. And the examples of such kind of crystals is calcite. So we have seen that these were the different this was the very important phenomena occurring in such kind of an isotopic crystals where double refraction takes place. But it depends upon how are you instant your how do you instant your light on the crystal. And it depends upon the two important parameters of the crystal that is optic axis and principal plane. So now we'll try to see, we'll try to construct a another very important crystal with the help of these known crystal so that we can polarize light. Because till now we have seen that by the phenomena of double refraction, we are getting two rays and both O ray and E ray, they are having different polarization. O ray is having perpendicular polarization to the principal plane, whereas E ray is having parallel polarization. But in order to completely polarize light, we need only one ray. So in the next lecture, we will see that how we can construct a new crystal where we can obtain only one ray then then only we'll be able to get completely polarized light thank you for now